<laughs> These robins have been around me all day. Hey, I like you too. Not a good day for two leggeds. Rednecks and the like. Whew. Ran into a violent one this morning. Not violent towards me, but violent towards a young man, homeless man who'd been shoveling snow for money. Just demoralized and humiliated him, physically threatened him in front of the proprietor of a local coffee shop. And they still served him. You believe that? Still served him. Didn't ask him to leave, nothing. Because he's a working man. <clears throat> Guy probably hasn't slept anywhere decent. Probably been living in danger and in poverty since he was probably 12 or 13 years old. And it snows, he's got a chance to make some fucking money. And that's what he gets. I won't be going back to that coffee shop. Just something I've been thinking about anyway. But to be accurate in my reporting, to complete it, the proprietor did buy the young man. Once they got back and fetched him, because he fled the scene in fear, and they fed him a free breakfast and a coffee. But not an apology. Because people are weak. They won't defend... The ones that won't defend the honor of the homeless are just as bad as the ones who dishonor them. At least watch. I've seen situations where homeless are assaulted by police officers, you know, kicked and like... And I've watched. <clears throat> it's not worth intervening. It might be to someone else. It's not to me. i got to think long term. These towns are small. These police, these rednecks talk. I'm already fucking on their shit list just because I don't work. Not that I wouldn't love spending the rest of my miserable life in this town. Dealing with rednecks with a dick up their ass. It's quiet though. Wow. I'm trying to keep that coffee hot. There's also another thing about that coffee shop. The coffee is never as hot as I need it to be. Ah, that's it. It's my last coffee there. Yeah. I'm good with them people wise. I just this is where you just see and I I've also learned about one of the proprietors, psychologically. You know, we've gotten to know each other a little bit. At least I got to know them. And everyone there has, you know, trauma with their fathers. Her father was a philosopher. Her mother was a psychiatrist. And she's a tough one. But uh, the toughness doesn't go all the way through. People, you let one man menace an entire coffee shop because he's got a cock up his ass about some poor guy shoveling his driveway without being asked. Or at least because he might do so think is actually is more accurate. What do you have? You know, nobody's safe there. The world's not safe there. None of us are safe there. We're not safe in that world. We're not safe in the world when, you know, and the last, I was thinking of an event I think of a lot. It was actually quite useful. Um, an event I had with a redneck uh, landlord that I had who got two and her friends together and decided to spend some time telling me how useless I was to society. And, uh, I just sat quietly and listened to this in the kitchen in the house where I've been paying rent for a year and a half. And I wasn't surprised. This was a perfect learning tool for me. Um, very friendly psychopath who's now practicing um, counseling, by the way, like a lot of them enjoy doing. Um, really nice psychopathic woman. And uh, I've known many of them. And... Uh, so I've, I, I'm curious in the minds of such people, the strengths and weaknesses of those minds. They tell a story. I think some of that story gets lost as I listen to the geese and I go back in my childhood because I guess I'm going to a time when I, I didn't hear that story. 
You can hear that echo throughout the world, the calamity Jane of people's minds that they here and there will find the weakest possible person to humiliate, never learning anything about them. But they always make a mistake when they do this around me. I guarantee you that that man made a mistake today. One way or the other, they make a mistake when they do it around me. I don't need to stick around and see the results. I'm in nature. I'm right with nature. I don't ask people to be perfect, but I do expect a certain basic courtesy for one's fellow man. You take someone with so much, humiliating and demoralizing someone with so little, on the thin pretext that they might trespass on your property, under the influence of desperation, cold, and hunger. It's not unique to the white man. It's not, uh, it's not unheard of. And every time you get a sick dog like that, I guarantee you is a total pussy. Uh, a couple of bald eagles. You get a slap happy group of them all too willing to let it go without saying anything. And that's how the world works. I grew up with people like that. They weren't the worst people, but they would never say anything. Not even when it was their job to do it, their moral duty. Weak. What rules the world in such weakness? Celebrities, these movies, they don't interest me anymore. You look at uh, American media, they keep people in a trance. Half of them are upset about one thing, the other half are upset about the other. They keep them in a hypnotic trance. You can watch it, different levels of trance, mesmerized by their indignation. Mesmerized. You keep them wrapped, wrapped up. Wrapped up in race, wrapped up in, you know, most of these celebrities are pedophiles for girls or boys. Demi Moore, you can, see, you can see her on YouTube sticking her tongue down a little boy's throat. What are they worth your time? But they've had time to be obsessed. I had some friends as a kid who liked to play role-playing. I did too, but let's just say them, not me. They like to make up the, uh, the cam what are called campaigns. So if you play role-playing, you have a campaign, fictional characters, and you fight and you get hit points and blah, blah, blah. Well, they would make up these elaborate campaigns. In the span of an hour, they had written a small series of fantasy novels. I mean, you could, I mean any struggling writer would love to have heard some of the ideas these guys came up with. And the Hebraic or Judaic Luciferian order, the aristocratic order of the world, call it black, call it what you will, it's had 500 years at least obsessed with symbols. Anything you can symbolize, they've probably made a religion out of it. It's probably part of their panoply, their alphabet, their periodic fucking table, their, the logos, the patents, everything, the numbers, the alphanumerics, all the acronyms, Everything, the English language, is filled with their obsession with symbols. <laughs> and they're obsessed. And they eat children, and they fuck children, and they're just subhuman parasites. Whatever they are. I don't care about Jews, per se, or Christians, per se, as much as I care about the effect that these religions have on people. I mean, that's their only saving grace, is that on some level everyone is a victim of it. I mean, if someone got the flu, you wouldn't want to shoot them dead because they got the flu. Well, the human mind can get psychopathic flus. It loses its marbles. It loses its wits. It loses its will. It becomes weakened. It can be sick for ages, for hundreds of years. And if you're interested in medicine in the 21st century, you have to at least be interested in the sickness that man has sustained to his whole mind. Yes?
be it Jewish over here, Christian over here. So look at February. I kept looking at the word February, the twelfth and thirteenth month in my time space. And I kept seeing the word Hebrew. I kept seeing the word twelfth Hebrew. Be wary, obviously. And the word Hebrew. Hebrew Ari. Where's that R? Why is that R? February. Because it's the R from Hebrew. They've hidden it in there. And this is anti-Semitic, by the way. All of, all of this stuff is anti-Semitic. It's anti-you and me. It's anti-man. It's anti-natural man. It's fine. Put it in its place. The mind does. By the time you notice evil, your system's already been working on it. For those of you who appreciate my more positive gambits of thinking, by the time you notice stark evil, it, you've been working with it. Now, part of that means you've probably assimilated, gotten used to it. Part of that means you've, you've, uh, maybe you've transcended it a little bit. Maybe you're a better person than that. Maybe you found a way to let it sit with you. You will get with it in, in your own way, in your life. As you walk your walk, you'll... You'll turn your mind to this or that, and hopefully you're under the influence of a good deal of happiness. There's nothing wrong with being happy and analyzing the world joyfully. But do we have to imagine, as we look across these lands, that whatever might be a lie in the world, that, that the people that dominate the news are good people? That this is, this is what these people are at all? And the sound of their voice, to the sway of their hips to the, even the more intellectual so-called celebrities. You know, they're still trained animals. It's falsity within falsity. Every ring of hell is a false world. That's the thing about hell. Every ring of hell is false. When Robert Ehrman Ehr Monroe wrote his books about out-of-body experiences, he reported back, and there may be a good deal of embellishment and misunderstand that, but we're, we're, at, the end, at the end of the day, at base, we're listening to someone's idea of the astral plane, whatever that is, okay? But he said, he came back, and religious people were just obsessed. They were like drug addicts on the astral plane, just serving some maniacal god, like a narcissist that just demands their devotion, their sexual energy. Right? It loves getting their sexual energy. So that's why pedophilia is part of the ruling of the world. They love to, they're just all about getting that, eating that sexual energy up, eating that energy, drinking in that youthful energy. Now, you see a lot of old people, sometimes alcoholics, they just always hang around young girls, so the Ori's always hang around young boys. They're sucking up that sexual energy, feeding off of it. And if it's mutual, that's fine. But when it comes to infant children, obviously, there's no mute. You can't deduce any mutuality in that. Quite the opposite. It's never mutual with children. We understand that. Those who are reasonable people, that children speak a different language. So you could say that a child loves you, as Demi Moore says of her victim. And that child may say they love you, but that doesn't mean that's love. But we can extract from that a lot of ways that people determine things to be loving. That we are oppressed, we are um, infantilized. People like the man who accosted this homeless uh, young man. And if I was his age and approached by a man like that, I would be pretty fucking afraid. He handled himself well, he just walked away, walked left the scene, did the right thing. Owner came and got him, fed him breakfast. But they served the predator his breakfast with just as much happiness. They faked it. Maybe they just didn't want to create a mess. Maybe they figured, hey, this is just a freak occurrence. It's also a statement being made on your property. Would you let someone come in your home and humiliate your brother or sister and not say anything? Ask yourself that. And are there conditions where you might think, I'll let this one go? 